Hello everybody, it is Andy and today we will be talking about how to get started in pageantry. I embarked on my pageant journey not too long ago. It's been about a year and three months now. I started in March of 2021 and I was preparing for USA National Miss South Carolina, which is just one of many pageant organizations. We will get to that in just one second. But the whole purpose of this video is to learn a few tips and tricks that I've learned so that you're not as scared and lost as I was when I was first starting. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is find a pageant system that lines up with your ideals. Now, what this means is many different things, but certain pageant organizations, let's talk about Miss USA and Miss America for a second, because those are the two that most non-pageant people still know of. So Miss USA is gonna be a pageant system that focuses on interview, swimsuit, and evening gown or fitness for teens. And Miss America is actually one of the polar opposites which is gonna be talent interview and gown. So if you, the first check box is if you want to compete in a talent pageant or a non-talent pageant. And they both exist. Talent pageants, if you do have a talent, sometimes have better scholarships for them. But if you don't have a talent like me, you might wanna stay clear of those and find a different organization that works for you. The next thing you wanna look at is if you want to compete in fitness or swimsuit because the phases of competition do change for every pageant system, and some will have swimsuits, some will have fitness, some will have runway. So my pageant organization, USA National Miss, has interview, runway, and gown. But if you are scared of for swimsuit or fitness, of what your body shape looks like, pageants are all about body positivity. So there are so many systems that accept different heights, different sizes, that should definitely not be a reason to steer you away. Now, getting back to it, the next thing you're gonna wanna look at, and this one is very, very important, is the national platform. So every pageant organization normally has a national platform that as a state title holder, or a national title holder is what you will be promoting throughout your reign. So you want to research this and make sure it's one that you want to talk about, that you want to promote throughout a whole entire year and two maybe if you become a national queen and that it holds true to your heart because it is something you are gonna be passionate about as the next national queen. So I'll give you an example, USA National Miss, their national platform is Inspire. And Inspire allows you to really do anything you want because there's three pillars, compassion, kindness, and earth. And you can do anything under Inspire. So inspire your community through trash cleanup, stuff like that. But you can also build your own personal platform under it. So for me, I want to empower girls to find a career that they are passionate about and consider typically male-dominated fields. So throughout my whole state reign, I've been able to go and speak to girls about this, and I've loved doing it because it's something that holds true to me. So if it's something you love doing, it won't become a job. Even though it is a job, it won't seem like a job because you're having fun with it and you feel like you're making an impact. So really just look into these different organizations, see what they're all about. And then also just to clarify, today we're talking about state and national pageants. Some girls do choose to start with a festival pageant, which a lot of the steps will be the same, just on a much smaller level. Those most of the time don't have interview. They normally just have a casual wear and evening gown competition. So there's a little less preparing that goes into it. But if you want to get started like I did and just go straight to a state pageant, keep watching this video. So the next step is once you find that pageant system that you like, you're gonna to wanna to go to their social medias and start following the national title holders. If your state has a title, you wanna follow the state title holders and you really wanna do further research to make sure that once you're following these queens, it's something you're still interested in. Meaning some go on a lot of trips, some don't. If this is something that's important to you and they don't check the box, maybe go back to the drawing board and restart. And a good place to look at different pageants would be Pageants Planet. You can look up the top ranked organizations and you can also learn what their prize package is and what their organization values hold. So once you see if there's a state pageant, not all pageants, especially if you live in the Northern or Western areas, a lot of times 
these pageant systems won't hold pageants there. So then you need to see if you can take an appointed title. An appointed title allows you to go to a national pageant without actually competing at the state level. Once you do that, it is time to start preparing. I believe the first step is headshots. And this is because headshots can take a good three to four months. Many of the times headshots, um, the photographers and the hair and makeup artists are booked a good two to three months out and then they need time to retouch them and edit them. I highly recommend if you're going to a state pageant or a national pageant that you have pageant headshots. And this means they are normally partnered or are the hair and makeup artists. You have professional hair and makeup done and they know how to make you look like a queen. So you want to show up with a headshot that's going to give the judges a great first impression of you because they will normally get these headshots before the pageant week or weekend has even started. So that being said, there's only two different kinds of headshots, I would say. There's natural headshots, and then there's also more glammed up headshots. Natural headshots is the direction I have drawn. I've had my headshots done twice now in the past year and a couple months. I had my state headshots and my national headshots, but really, if you are, um, if you look the same, you don't need new ones. So get good ones and you won't have to pay for it twice. So the natural headshots normally are more um, you. They look like you. They just look like a glammed up you. So that way, when you walk in the interview room, I want to, them to go, oh my gosh, she's just as pretty in person. And this is who I'm looking at. I do not want to walk in the interview room and then go, who is that? She does not match this picture. So if you do choose to go the more glammed up way, they accentuate your features to make it not look as much like you. Those headshots are still gorgeous, but you just need to take that into consideration. And headshots aren't judged, so it really doesn't matter. It just matters for really how you want to feel and how you want to portray yourself. Another thing is headshots are normally not local. If you do decide to use a pageant headshot person, you can try to look up people with your state title to see who they use and see if you like the work. But most of the time, you might have to travel a good few hours. Or there is always the option of if the hair and makeup artist slash photographer is coming in for a state pageant or a national pageant soon, you might be able to see if they can do it while they're at that pageant. So just looking to that, but really um, there are so many talented ones out there. I will put a link down below to show y'all some that I personally like the work of and what Pageant Planet thinks, but definitely do tons of research. Just know you might have to drive. The next step is coaching. So you need to decide if you want to coach or not. I did coach for my state pageant. I worked with somebody pretty local to me. I was a bit worried at first. This is one of the things that I was like concerned about when I was starting my pageant journey because I knew I wanted coaching. My mom wasn't in pageantry. My grandma wasn't in pageantry. Nobody in my immediate circle was in pageantry. So I needed somebody to teach me. And I wound up finding somebody about an hour and a half away. And even though that is quite a drive, it was 100% worth it. Coaches will help you improve on interview skills. They will help you make a walking pattern. They will help you learn how to walk, which sounds like the strangest thing. But pageant walking is so different than everyday life, right? And then they will also help you with paperwork, personal intros, posture, poise, just everything you want to know. They'll also give you some amazing tips, and that's a big thing. If you find a coach that is known for your pageant system, they will be able to give you insider tips and tricks because they've worked with girls who have gone to these for numerous years, so they know what they're expecting. They know what hair and makeup artists, because every pageant system has a different look, too. So they know maybe what your headshots should look like. Some are more natural, some are more glammed, and they know what's kind of allowed. So if you find a coach that works for your pageant system. And a great way to do this is to look up the best pageant coaches and look at what systems they normally have title holders with. They always have a like testimonials page where you can see who's won and you can see the feedback. And it's amazing to see what these girls are saying about them as well to, as to see who they've worked with. That being said, most pageant coaches are just virtual coaches. So if you do not have a pageant coach in your area, you should 
deeply consider virtual coaching. That is what I cur currently do for my national pageant. And I think it's amazing. I've learned more actually doing virtual with this person than with my previous coach. So that was a bit scary at first because you're probably thinking, how do you do coaching virtually? They can't see you. They can't, they can see you. They will ask for different angles potentially, but they can do everything and better virtually. So you just do it from your house. You normally call them, FaceTime them, and they can help you with that. Especially if you're training for a national pageant, look for those coaches who are experienced in your pageant system. If you decide not to coach, that is perfectly all right. But I do have some tips for that just from what I've seen. And it's obviously this is the least expensive option of the two, but you should ask your state queen what their reign has been like, ask if they have any tips, ask them really anything you know about it, because the state queens are all about promotion of their titles. They are here to actually recruit more people. So if you show interest, they are going to be happy to answer your questions most of the time. And they will help you know what their day-to-day -day life looks like as a state title holder, what they did to prepare, and if they just have any tips for you. Also, you should start to look up interview questions. I'm going to link in the bio a list of about 200 interview questions that are commonly asked. But with interview, there are a few different things that fall into it, again, which are like the, um, based on the pageant system. So the length of the interview, your Miss America and your pageant systems like that are normally longer interviews. So they're normally about 10 minutes long versus my systems, only two minutes and all the ones like NAM, IJM, UIM, those are normally two to three minutes long. So the amount you're gonna cover in that interview is very different than what you're gonna cover in a 10 minute interview. This being said, this also has to go based on what topics are allowed. At Miss USA and Miss America, politically debated questions are allowed. At UNM, I'm so happy because they are just asking you questions based on you. They just ask questions based on your bio sheet, and it really allows you to stand out because you can really talk to them about what you're passionate about, and you won't really have to take a side on what's going on in the world. So looking to that too, to see if that's something you are, if you are a politically passionate person and you wanna talk about that, looking to pageant systems that offer that. If not, my pageant system I love because I really, it's two minutes long, so they're just getting to know me, who I am in a short period of time and seeing what I have done. Also, if you decide not to coach, start watching YouTube videos of Miss USA and see how they walk, record yourself and see what looks different between the two. And this sounds so silly, but you will see little things that you should tweak and you'll start to learn how to walk in heels. But also I highly recommend if your pageant organization is on Pageants Live or Pageants Vision, I will link both down below as well, then you should watch previous years of competition from your pageant organization because each pageant organization does have a different stage. And most of the time they keep it relatively similar. So you can see how girls will actually walk. You'll see if they stick to the walking pattern or if they can diverge from it a little bit and add spins and turns. But my tips for you are just to have your shoulders back, be poised and take on strides. Those are three simple tips, but definitely start to train as soon as you can, because the more time you have in your heels, the better. I personally practice every single night, and it can be a lot, especially with school, work, and whatever, but you can do it, and it will help, you make, it will help make you feel so much more comfortable and confident on stage. My final step of advice for coaching versus not coaching, and really for both of them, is to find a pageant mentor. Find somebody that can encourage you, but can you that you can also go to to ask questions. Because let's be honest, if you know nobody in pageantry like me, it was very hard to start and to understand what I need to do, to understand what the weekends are going to look like or the pageant weeks, what it's all going to appear as. So find somebody in that system, preferably, who has known it for a good while and that can help walk through the pageant weekend with you and answer any questions you may have. The next step you need to do is to find a pageant wardrobe. And there are many approaches to this depending on your phases of competition. Of course, this is gonna vary what you need, but a lot of times there's so much more that goes into it than just the 
stage outfits. So for beginners, I'm gonna talk to you guys about what my pageant wardrobe looks like to give you a little insider look, but I'm also gonna to talk to you about how to find these outfits. So for me, I have my interview outfit, which can be a jumpsuit or a dress for most systems, just whatever you feel more confident in. And then for that, also you need to think with every outfit, what accessories do you need? Earrings, shoes, all of it. Interview outfits, you can typically find if you're looking to spend less money, you can find on a Revolve or a website like that. It, um, maybe even Nordstrom's to be honest. And then if not, you can always look on resale. Resale pages are like Queenly, if you've heard of that, I'll link that in the bio, as well as Facebook marketplace groups. There's like Sherry Hill pageant resale page. There's so many different ones out there. And most of the time people are selling stuff. So you can normally get some pretty nice items discounted. If you are looking to spend um, a little bit more money and you want to have a brand new pageant interview dress, um, the retailers that I've seen are Ashley Loren, Sherry Hill, Giovanni, Jonathan Kane, Rachel Allen, but there are so many more. So just look up some pageant dress shops in your area. And when I say in your area, most of the time you will not have one in your area, but you might have to drive an hour and a half, two hours, three hours, but you will wanna see what brands they carry before you go because every store carries different brands. And if you have your mindset to one item or one brand, they might not carry it. And before you make that long drive, just go ahead and make that phone call. Next up is your runway outfit. And your runway outfit is where you really get to show your personality. It's a more fun walk and you get to wear a fun outfit as well. So most people will either wear a jumpsuit with a cape or a romper with a cape or a two-piece with like a skirt or a short, really anything. You can watch different pageant systems again. I watch USA National Miss, you, they have an amazing runway and they have so many different outfits. So try to get some ideas there. Look up best pageant runway or best pageant fun fashions and you'll get to see so many different things and really try styles. Because when I first started, I was like, I want this kind of dress. Well, I tried on that kind of dress and it did not look good on me. So you need to have an open mind, see what really looks good on you, get a friend's advice, get your parents' advice anybody who can help steer you in the right direction and who will be honest with you. The next outfit you need is evening gown. Most to all pageant systems will have an evening gown competition. So an evening gown, it can be so many different things because depending on your age division, it goes all the way down to like four to 26. There's so many different pageant systems that offer pageants for different ages. And with that, you want to look your age. So for Lils, they normally wear ball gowns and it normally gets a bit gray area as you age up for that preteen, junior teen category because they are going through a transition phase. So I didn't compete in that age group, so I don't have much advice for that. But once again, go to a pageant planet and stuff like that and see what girls the, that age are wearing. For teens, a lot of times they might still wear a straight dress with a ball gown over it with an overstirt, I should say, or a ball gown is still acceptable. Mermaid dresses are starting to become a thing at this age. And then for Miss, you can get away with a little bit more. But with evening gown, that is a very organization dependent outfit because the dresses worn at Miss USA, for example, versus Miss America are two very different outfits and you would not wanna show up in one at the other and one at the other. So definitely look to see what is appropriate at that system. Some are more conserved, some are more loose. So you'll see what girls are typically wearing. And because most of the time, there isn't going to be a handbook that straight up tells you this is what is appropriate and this is what is not. But a lot of times, if you see what girls are wearing, you'll get a general idea. Not that you want to copy them at all, but you can start to see the styles that these girls wear for certain ages. And a coach can also help guide you in the right direction for this. On top of your main outfits, and of course, if it's fitness, then you can find that as well. You are going to want to find outfits throughout the day, especially for a weekend long or a week long state pageant or national pageant. You have so many different outfits. You need to know if there is a party. A lot of pageant systems have at least one party during their week. 
Some have pajama parties. So those are pretty easy, but make sure it's appropriate and comfortable because that is a time to just bond with other girls. And then if, is, if there's other parties, you want to know how dressed up you should be, how dressed down you should be. I personally think for my organization, most girls do get pretty dressed up for them with some very nice cocktail dresses. So you can find those on resale again, or you can buy them new. Just know that with every outfit, you need to plan earrings and shoes. So it can get very costly. And if you're looking to keep it a little less expensive, definitely check out resale pages. Of course, the next step to do or long ago should be register for your pageant. You need to normally register at least a few months before the actual pageant date as registration will close. So registration normally is not anything too fancy. Normally you might have to submit your headshot. So this is why it's so good. If, even if you're like, oh my gosh, I'm fine. That pageant is eight months out. Girl, it's time to start preparing now because you need those headshots and those take a while to get back and you need to make sure they come back before registration closes. So registration for some systems will have you do headshots. They will have you submit your like basic information and a bio sheet. So your bio sheet, you can definitely work on with your coach, but if not, it should stay true to you. Make sure you never put anything on there that is inaccurate or that isn't true to what you want to speak about because the judges will ask you about it and you will be lost. So make sure every single piece of information you put is true to you and something you are passionate about. Um, my best advice for bio sheet would just to be, don't make it too complicated. If it says hobbies, my advice for hobbies is to write something that stands out. Don't put, I like to watch TV. I like to bake. I like to hike. I like to run. A lot of people are going to write that. Instead, twist it up and put a fun twist to it. So maybe put, I got to hike the Grand Canyon over X amount of miles. And that's amazing, right? That is like, oh my gosh. So tell us about your trip to the Grand Canyon. Or you want to make it interesting so that the judges are provoked to ask questions about it. My fun fact or hobby, um, my fun fact is normally something about aviation because I am training to be a pilot and there's such few women. I love being able to talk to the judges about this. So I get to talk to them. I normally put something about what I've done in aviation, what I've accomplished, and this allows them to ask about it. But you always want to put it in a way that they want to know more. Don't just blatantly put a fact that they understand and that they don't want to ask about, right? So make it fun and tell them a story. Everything should be backed with a story. So if you say, I'm a relatable person, well, how are you relatable? Have a story for it. And then you also want to submit your bio sheet, headshot, and are officially registered. That's a green check. Um, you need to start to find a hair and makeup artist. If you are not doing your hair and makeup at the pageant, because pageant hair and makeup is so different than daily life, start to research different people who are going to be there. Ask the directors or the pageant um, organization who are the approved hair and makeup artists because most of the time you are going to want to use somebody who's approved for that system because they will be able to access that stage. They will know your schedule and it will make it so much easier on you. With that being said, know the hair and makeup rules. Every system has different rules. Some systems will not allow you to have extensions. Some for the younger girls, especially UNM is known for having the girls look their age. You don't want a five-year-old to show up with a full face of makeup looking like she's 20. So make sure that you research the pageant system's hair and makeup rules. Most of the time, once you get older, it is pretty loose. But for the younger girls, make sure that they look their age and they look true to what that pageant system is looking for. Once you book your hair and makeup artist, that is a second green check. You are right in the right direction again. So now, littler things that we are now talking about are spray tans. No, if you have a good spray tan person near you, definitely just use them. But if you don't, you don't want to show up looking orange. So if they have a spray tan person on site, I would recommend that because most of the time they are experienced and they know what will make you look good under stage light. Also with that, nails. Book your nail appointment. I booked mine a month in advance of nationals because I want to make sure that I'm ready. 
make sure for nails, most of the time the advice is a um, more nude color, like a like pink or a beige, and just something that looks natural and won't take away from your look. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is once you have your wardrobe, you're gonna wanna make sure you get alterations. Alterations sometimes can be quite expensive, but you want to make sure these outfits fit you because after spending a good amount of money on all this wardrobe, you want to make sure it fits you because if not, it will be a waste and it will look funny on stage and it won't make you stand out because all they will be looking at is, oh my gosh, her outfit's too loose or it's too long or she's tripping over it because it's too long. Make sure you find somebody who's reputable. Make sure that they are somebody who has worked on gowns a lot. Make sure they are somebody who you can trust will keep your items clean and protected. A lot of times there are pageant alterations. People who really primarily focus on bridal and pageantry or prom, these are great people to go to. You can also, for wardrobe, I should have said this before, but there are some seamstresses that can actually make you an outfit and make your vision come to life for a lot less cost than if you were to use a pageant designer. And the final thing you're going to want to do is to know if your pageant system requires a platform. So platforms, personal platforms, are where you get to make an impact based on what you are passionate about. And for me, I did not have a platform at my state pageant. It wasn't a requirement, as well as it's not technically a requirement for nationals either, but it's a great resource to have because you can do most of your community service through it. Think about it like that. You're focused on, on one sector of community service and how you want to make a difference. And if you focus all of your things in one bucket, it kind of makes it easier to realize what you have done and it makes it cohesive to you. And so I was really struggling after state. I knew I wanted a national platform, but I didn't know, sorry. I knew I wanted a personal platform, but I was struggling to figure out what that might be. Most of the ones I had seen in the past had to do with bullying prevention, mental health awareness, pets, food insecurity, homeless, gender inequality, stuff like this. And although all of these are very important matters, it wasn't something that I had a necessarily life-changing experience with that I could tell my story and make a difference. When I realized what it was, I was like, oh my gosh, it's been staring at me in the face this whole entire time. So I'm a firm believer in role models and mentors. And what I realized is that although only 7% of all pilots are women, there are women to look up to. And if I can help show girls that there are women in these careers, then maybe it will inspire them to do it and not steer them in the wrong direction. So I started my personal platform based on an interview series. I really wanted to show girls that there are women out there. I wanted to highlight them and I wanted to show girls what those careers looked like for women, the setbacks they've had to overcome and what advice those women have. And so I created a website, which was crazy because I was like, I've never done this. I'm not that good with technology, but I did it. And I started interviewing women. I would do Zoom calls with them and I would just talk to them. Some of them are about 10 minutes long. Some go all the way up to like 45 minutes because some people are so passionate about it. And the whole purpose of these videos was to inspire girls to go into these fields by seeing successful role models in them. And then after I did that for about a month or two, I was like, this is going really well, but I actually want to go in person and talk to girls because most of the time they don't realize at such a young age what's out there for them. And so I started making um, meetings with Girl Scout Troop leaders, and I was contacting different people in my area to try to reach out to girls. And I wound up now speaking to over 20 troops and 250 girls about career exploration and talking to them about all the possibilities awaiting them. And I think the thing is when you pick your personal platform, make it something that you're gonna have fun with because you're gonna be doing this for a year, possibly two, you're gonna be promoting it. So you want it to be something that you are happy to go and do. For me, I love speaking to girls. It gives me excitement. I love hearing what they have to say. And so it was meant for me, but it might take you a month, like literally, and you can change it too. Like if something is, does not seem right about what you're doing, if you don't feel like you're making enough impact, if you feel like you should be making a different impact, change it. As long as you haven't submitted your bio sheet with all that on it you can change it. You can explore different things. 
Maybe you need some self-exploration to help you realize what you have to offer. So that wraps up this video. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I hope this helped you. And if you still have more questions, feel free to comment them down below, and I will definitely get back to you, as well as if you're interested in UNM or just need questions from me even on a personal basis, I'm more than happy to help. I will link my social medias below. Definitely follow and DM me if you have any questions. And I've also linked a ton of resources below. So definitely go check those out. And I hope you all well in your pageant journey because it is so fun. And there is a whole world waiting out there for you. Bye guys.